good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Moore's Algebra 1 and 2 class. We're dealing with radicals, and we're going to continue dealing with radicals. So far, seems like you guys have been doing pretty well, right? It's pretty easy. It's good stuff. Today, we're going to simplify more radical expressions using properties of radicals now. Remember, yesterday, we were simplifying uh, radical expressions using properties of exponents, because you now know that you can write a, a radical as a radical or as a, an expression with a rational exponent, a fraction exponent. So today we're going to talk about the product of radicals and also division property of radicals. Today is actually the good stuff. This is where we put everything together and start breaking things down. We're not going to have perfect squares now anymore or perfect cubes. We're going to have a combination of a perfect square perhaps with another number that's not a perfect square or a perfect fourth with another number that is not a perfect fourth. So we're going to have to break things down. Now, let's talk about the product property of radicals. In order to multiply the radical expressions, they must have the same index. Kind of like, uh, like terms kind of but not really, because like terms, you can multiply anything. doesn't matter. It has to have the same index, my friends. I cannot multiply the cube root of 5 times the square root of 10. That just, it doesn't work. It does not work. Okay? It does not work. If I had the cube root of 5, um, uh, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. If I had the cube root of 5 times, let's say, uh, the square root of 25, this I could do. Because I could turn this guy into 5 to the 1 third, and this is times 5, so I have the same basis and I can add the exponents, correct? Okay. But when we're multiplying radicals that have different bases, you can't do that. Because if you have different bases, how are you going to add it? Like, like this example right here. How are you going to multiply those together? You can't. You don't have the same base. So even if you try to break this down into an exponent that is rational, that is a fraction, you're not going to have the same base. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? So in order for you to be able to multiply radicals with any base, they must be the same index. So the nth root of a times the nth root of b, the root here that is common is the nth root. That is going to equal the nth root of a times b. You simply multiply them together. So if you have, for example, the uh, whatever, the third root of 5 times the third root of 3, that's going to equal the third root of 15. Done. I cannot simplify that any further, but I can bless you. I can multiply the insides together as long as I'm keeping the same root, okay? Now, one thing I, wanna, I, I want to express to you guys, um, please be careful with this. A lot of times people add these together and that is wrong. Do not add those, okay? You're just simply keeping the, the index and you're multiplying the insides. For example, can you simplify the product of the radical expressions? Explain. Okay. Can I multiply these two together for, for A? No, you cannot. Why, Moro? Because, did, go ahead. Different indexes and different bases. Remember, if I had the cube root of 6 times the square root of 6, I can do this. Not with, with radicals, but I can turn this into 6 to the 1 third times 6 to the 1 half, and now I can add 1 third and 1 half, that goes to 6, that goes to 2, that goes to 6, that goes to 3, and this would be 6 to the 5 6, which is the 6 root of 5. You guys, uh, come on, moral, 6 root of, of uh, oh my goodness gracious, come on, moral, 6 root of 6 to the 5th. We, we understand that, right guys? But that was only possible, why? because I had the same radicand, okay? When I have different radicands, different bases, if they do not have the same index, 
I cannot do anything with them. Period. Okay, how about here? Cube root of negative, yes, sir. No. How can I do that? 6 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 half. Are these the same bases? You cannot multiply them if they're not the same bases. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it greatly. All right. Now, cube root of negative 4 times a cube root of 2. What do we got? There's going to be a cube root of negative 8, which, guess what? No, there's not going to be absolute value. What, what do I tell you when there's a negative and there's an odd index? Pulls out as a negative. What's the cube root of 8? 2. Negative 2. It's not an absolute value. Absolute value is when I take an odd root out of an even index. Fourth root of 7 times the fifth root of 7. I can't multiply these together, though, in radical form, though, can I? But I can do this. 7 to the 1 fourth times 7 to the 1 fifth. I have the same base. So 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. That goes 20. That goes 4. 20. I mean, I'm sorry. That's 5. That's 4. So I've got 7 to the 9 twentieths, which can be rewritten as the 20th root of 7 to the 9th power. So I could not multiply these two radicals directly because they had different indexes. But I could break them down into rational indexes, rational exponents, rather, because they had the same base. How about this fifth root of negative 5 times fifth root of negative 2? Yeah, what's that going to be? Fifth root of 10, right? Which is 1 half, right? Yeah, people are saying, yeah, no, it's not. It's not 1 half. I just fooled all of you guys. How is this 1 half? This is 10 to the 1 fifth. How is that 1 half? I mean, you guys got to think about it. I love it when I just throw random things out there. I only said a half because there's a 5 and a 10, and I figured out oh, they'll fall for it. And you did. So please, it's not a half. Not at all. That was a joke. Okay, fifth root of 6x times fifth root of 7c squared. Can I multiply them? Yes. Absolutely. There's the fifth root of 42xc squared. You cannot break that down. That's 2 and 21 and a 7 and a 3. You don't have a set of 5 of anything, so you cannot break it down. How about this? Can I multiply these two together? Square root of x minus 5. Is, okay, so this is the square root of x minus 5 times x plus 5. What does that remind you of, guys? Ah, uh, yeah, you foil, but it's a difference of squares. x squared minus 25. Remember, the middle terms cancel. How did I do that? Foil. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times positive 5 is negative 25. The 5s cancel. I'm left with that. Go ahead. You cannot simplify this. Guys, do I have a set of 2 here? I have an x minus 5 and an x plus 5. Is that a set of 2? Do I have 2 x minus 5s? Do I have 2 x plus 5s? This is my answer, my brothers. I multiply them together into one radical. But can I take away individual pieces of polynomials? No, we can never do that. You know that. Thank you, though. It was a great question. Great question. Okay, here. I got 72 times x cubed times y squared times 10 times x times y cubed. This is what I'm going to suggest strongly. A lot of times, people like to go ahead and multiply it together. And they'll say, okay, it's the square root of 720 x to the fourth y to the fifth. That's beautiful. That's fantastic. However, you got to break this down. 720 is a large number to break down, correct? So what I suggest is the following. Go ahead and make your square root, but just go 72 times 10. Let's break those down individually. Then I have x to the fourth and y to the fifth. We'll do with the variables in a second. 72. Think of a perfect square, guys. 
Perfect square. Come on. 36. Thank you. 36 and 2. This breaks down into 5 times 2. Please pay attention. What's the square root of 36? So I pull out a 6. Then I have a 2 and a 2, which comes out as a 2. What's the square root of x to the 4th? What's the square root of y to the 5th? y squared. And then I'm going to have a square root of what's left over? 5y. Right, because I have this 5 here. Do you see what I just did there, guys? And now my answer would be 12x squared, y squared, times the square root of 5y. Done, done, and done. And that's what I mean by pulling out perfect squares and having a remainder. Yes, sir. Isn't there a 5 left over inside of the radical that was not pulled out? And then... How many times does 2 go into 5? Two times. Isn't there one y left over? Yes. That's why it's square root of 5y. So Excuse me? Yeah, there was a 5 left over and a y left over. So that stays the same inside here. You multiply them, yeah. Thank you, sir. Does that make sense, guys? Questions on that? Yes, no, maybe kind of, sort of. No? Okay. All right, next. In math, we say that a radical expression is simplified when the radicand cannot be broken down any further. You want it simplified. That means you can't break it down any further, just like simplifying a fraction. A fraction is simplified where there are no more GCFs between the numerator and the denominator. In order to simplify radicands, simply reverse the properties of radicals. Here's a procedure. Write each factor of the radicand as a product of two factors, one of which is a perfect power of the index. Write the radicand as the product of two radicals, one of which contains perfect powers of the index using the product property of radicals. And three, take the nth root of each power. Okay, Mr. Morrow, can you explain what this means in English? Yes. I will tell you right now. I have five cube root of 24. I'm looking for a perfect cube to take out of this 24. What can I break this 24 into, my friends? Come on, think perfect cubes. Eight and three. What's the cube root of eight? Okay, so I pull out a two. Two times five is ten. And I've got the cube root of 3 left over. Tell me that's not difficult. Come on. That's not hard, right? Did you guys see that? Promise? Okay. Cube root of 128. X to the 7th. Okay. Do you have any cube, perfect cubes that you can think of? If not, I'll show you how to break it down. No? Okay. Let's do this then. How about 64 and 2? Correct? What's the cube root of 64? So that takes out a 4. What's the cube root of x to the 7th? Come on, guys. How many times 3 going to 7? x squared. What's left over? A 2x. Does that make sense, my friends? I promise. 64 times 2, cube root of 64 is 4. Done. 7 divided by 3, 2 x's come out. There's 1 x left over and 1 2 left over. Does that make sense? Thank you, gentlemen. Um, cube root of 54 x to the 5th. Very good. See? That's what, my, well, that's what my boys do. There you go. 27 times 2 and then you have x to the 5th. So cube root of 27 is 3. What's the, the uh, gosh, the cube root of x to the 5th? x, and then I left over, I have a cube root of 2x two x squared. X squared. If you have to, guys, I know I'm doing this in my head, if you have to, once you pull out the x squared, the x or the x squared, if you want, go ahead and show yourself what you've got left. Because you took out one set of three, so there's two x's left over. Does that make sense? Okay. 
4 minus the square root of 20. The square root of 20 breaks up into what, my friends? Think perfect squares, 4 and 5. What's the square root of 4? So this is 4 minus 2, bless you. Square root of 5 over 2. I can divide this 2 to this and to that 2. So this is going to equal 2 minus the square root of 5. Because that 2 can be dis distributed to the 4. And this 2 can be distributed to this 2. A whole number can never affect the inside of a radical. Never. Ever. Ever. Okay? Ever. You got a question, my brother? Correct? They're separate. Yeah. You cannot combine, you cannot multiply um, a whole number to a radicand. You can't add a whole number to a radicand either. How about this one? 32. Very good. 16 and 2. What's the square root of 16? So I got negative 2 plus 4, square root of 2 left over, divided by 4. Go ahead and divide that to both. I'm going to have negative 1 half plus square root of 2. Done. That makes sense, my brothers. Yes, sir. What's negative 2 divided by 4? Negative 1 half. What's 4 divided by 4? 1. That's why I'm left with negative 1 half plus 1 times the square root of 2. Does that make sense now, son? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? You cannot add this negative 2 plus 4 because you don't have a 4. You have a negative 2 plus 4 times the square root of 2. Are these like terms? Thank you for asking, brother. These are great questions. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Excellent. Square root of 20, um, x tenth. Very good, sir. 4 and 5. Square root of 4 is 2. So what do I have left over? Already a 5. What's, and what's the square root of x to the tenth? x to the fifth, but i got to put an absolute value. Because I took an even root out of an, um, an, an, an odd root out of an even index. Sorry. 75. 25 and 3. So I got 5. Square root of 3 inside. What's the square root of y cubed? Or y to the sixth? y cubed, which is an absolute value. Does that make sense? Okay. I've got like seconds left. Wait, let's see how much time I've got here. Let's see what we got left here. All right. We're not going to be able to finish today. Um, and that's not good. But let's, let's just keep going as far as we can. I've got the square root of 3 to the square root of 15. So can I multiply them? Yes. This is the square root of 45. Now let's break it down. This is 9 times 5. What's the square root of 9? So this is 3 square root of 5. Done. Do you see this, my friends? Okay. Now, when you got something ugly like this, don't be scared. This is the fourth root. Don't multiply the numbers together. Trust me. 27 times 6. Y to the fifth, you can do the variables. W to the eleventh. Now let's break this 27 down real quick. 3 times 9, 3 times 3, 2 times 3. We're looking for sets of 4. So 1, 2, 3. Four threes come out as a 3. You with me? And I have a fourth root of 2 left over, this guy right here. Now, fourth root of y to the fifth is y with one y left over. Fourth root of w to the 11th is w squared with a w cubed left over. Do you guys see how that's working? Um, the y has to be an absolute value, yes. Because it took an odd out of an even. Excellent, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk next week.